Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about Skyline, Hather SX2, Yuzu, and Ocarina of Time. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Yuzu. Now, we talked about a pretty big update from Yuzu just a few days ago. On July 12th, Yuzu introduced Project Andio, which replaced the entire Yuzu audio system. This made a bunch of games playable, but there were some issues with it. They actually had to roll it back. So fast forward to today and the Yuzu team has fixed those bugs and reintroduced Project Andio. If you open up Yuzu and make sure it's updated, you should have the latest updates. Project Andio should be live and you should have a complete audio replacement making a ton of games playable including Fire Emblem Warriors. And I'm not gonna lie here, version 1090 is a pretty big update for Yuzu. The development team has been extremely hard at work initially developing this and then quickly fixing it. And now we can enjoy it in all of its glory. And speaking about big updates, next up here we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. Skyline has a brand new version available to download right on their website. I'll leave a link in the description below. However, this is not the version that I'm talking about in this video. If you have a previous version of Skyline, yes, update, but there might be a bigger update coming very soon. So just yesterday, we talked about a very special tester build of Aether SX2 that uses turnip drivers. Those are custom open source Vulcan drivers. And if you can see here, someone got Super Mario Odyssey running at close to 40 frames a second. This is the absolute best that I've ever seen this rendered on Android. Now, yes, there's a ton of graphical issues and things aren't quite right just yet, but some people might classify this as playable, kind of. At this point in time, I have no idea when this version of Skyline will be available to the public, but you can bet it's probably coming. And speaking about public builds, Aether SX2 is on a tear. There's a brand new development build available to test out if you want. If you're currently using the Google Play Store of Aether SX2, which is PS2 emulation on Android, well, the development version has a ton of new features and a ton of improvements. Now, there are two different ways to get these development builds. The first way is to sign up as a beta tester right on Aether SX2's Google Play Store page. Although it does take a bit of time after the release to actually hit the Play Store page. If you want to be on the complete cutting edge of things, head to aethersx2.com. Click on download here, scroll down to where you see closed testing alpha, click on that, click on the top folder and there's the APK right at the very top, version 2468. And just a friendly reminder here, these development builds are considered experimental. Some stuff might be broken, some stuff might not work as anticipated. They are basically testing versions of Aether SX2, so if you have a problem with them, Maybe just wait to the next version and maybe it's resolved. Last up here, we're talking about the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time PC port. There's a brand new update thanks to the Ship of Harkinian. So today there was a short and well put together Ship of Harkinian Direct where they went over these new changes. These new changes include some bug fixes, some improvements, and they've added in some cheats. For example, if you want, Link can now shield while using a two-handed sword. You can customize the heads-up display, modify the game's difficulty, have time move on the file select screen, a randomizer, and a whole lot more. I will leave a link to the Ship of Harkinian Direct in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. Not only is it an entertaining video and also informative, there are a ton of great links in the description. If you're interested in the Zelda PC port at all, I recommend checking this out and at least taking a look at the description. Now, as a bonus piece of news, you may or may not have already heard about this, but Unity is merging with Iron Source. It was a $4.4 billion deal. Unity will take control of Iron Source, the company that apparently made a malware installer. That's not a good sign. Now, questionable malware installer aside, Iron Source is a way for creators to monetize their apps and make money off of them, turning them into a business. Now, I would argue that Unity went ahead with this merger with the intent of drawing more developers to their platform, which would grow Unity and make everybody more money in the process and it appears this merger has kind of backfired. Shanna here, who is a developer, says, wait, what? Unity is merging with a company best known for its malware delivery system, so popular that it has its own entries in VirusTotal, was blacklisted on Windows by Microsoft, 
and was used to spread the fake flash installers through the Equifax site. Ouch. Maybe this merger will help clean up the reputation of Iron Source, or maybe this will be a thorn in the side of Unity and possibly drag it down maybe just a little bit or a lot. Only time will tell. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, whether it's Yuzu, Aether SX2, Skyline, Zelda on PC, or even this very weird Unity deal. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.